<laughs> Hello, I'm Michael Sigenthaler, and welcome to Skits Comic. Today, we are drawing Cyberfrog. Remember to go on over to Indiegogo and get on our mailing list. The link is in the description. Today, we're working on Cyberfrog. Today, we're on our third and final video. But before I get into talking about what's going on in the actual video, I wanted to give a little shout out to my wife. She does the Come Get Some videos, Black Star. I'd like to thank her for helping me uh, become better at actually doing these audio overs and doing the live streaming and stuff like that. She's a professional actress in Hollywood, and um, it's been a huge help. So thank you, wife. Love you. So right now would be a good time to actually look at your piece overall and decide how far you want to go with the drawing. I'm working right here, I believe, at about 400 DPI, which is standard. Most things print at about 300 DPI, but I always like to do mine at a little bit larger, just in case you ever want to blow it up and do a little something extra with it. But at this point in the drawing, it's really, really good to just kind of look at it and say, well, how far am I going to go with it? What am I, what's the end goal with this piece if it's just for concept art? Now, with concept art, you could actually, you know, take it and blow it up really big and really look at it, or you can just use it as a simple piece that you'd put up online or share with somebody and say, hey, you know, this is what I'm thinking about. What do you think? So when you get to this point in the drawing, kind of step back and say, hey, what am I going to do with this thing? You know, what's what's my end goal? But like I said, I'm only working at about 400 DPI because I don't expect to actually do too much with it. It's just for fun and get a little people looking at me using someone else's character. You know, it's just a way for me to sell myself a little bit better. As you can see, we're starting to really get in there and do some detail stuff. I'm not worried too much about the swamp stuff in the background, but what I really wanted to focus on is getting that shack done properly and to start getting the little bits of detail like the chicken on the spike and uh, more of Cyberfrog there. And really what, we're, what you're going to be seeing in this video for the most part is just me working on Cyberfrog and getting it exactly perfect. You know, I, I got to get in there and make sure that you can see all them little fingers, the stuff behind the chicken, the stuff that's covered up. I need to get in there and make sure all that's really nice. Also, though, I'm going to have to focus on the foreground. You can't just throw in some characters and not have any good foreground detail around them. I'm going to be sitting here working on the swamp. I got to make sure that swamp water looks good. I also got to make sure that the dock... You know, I got this big, huge dock, which is actually kind of a major feature in this piece. And I got to make sure that that looks uh, believable as well. You know, I got to get some shade underneath the dock. You know, even though there's not much sun hitting it, I, you're still, it's sunny out and there's going to be darkness underneath. There's going to be some shade underneath it. So I need to make sure that I do that. And also look at the boards. Look at the boards on, on this dock. It's obviously an old dock that's probably looked good maybe about 100 years ago, but people kept working on it and kept rebuilding it and adding new planks to it. So I really wanted to get that across in it. You know, I wanted it to look like, man, this thing's been here a while. Some of it's starting to fall down. Some of it's, you know, being picked up and being reworked on. So it's got a little nicer board. And at the same time, though, I want to have that moss growing on it. There is moss and, and mold on just about everything in a swamp. If it's been sitting there longer than a week, it's probably got some mold or moss on it. So we're also doing that. We're going back in there and we're dirtying it up. We're, we're uh, using a little bit of a texture brush here. And you can get texture brushes from anywhere or you can actually make your own texture brushes. You know, but I actually just grabbed this one that I had that came with Photoshop and I just threw some what looked like some good texture on them boards. Like I said, if there's moss and mold growing everywhere, you actually got to start putting that in all across your piece. I'm getting some scraggly little mold and some grasses and stuff growing on that little piece of land underneath the, the, the shack. And we're also starting to put mold everywhere. It's like I'm, I'm using a, a brush that's meant for fur. And 
by using that, it actually kind of gives the appearance of little strands of mold everywhere. Now, I'm also gonna be putting in some wood texture. You know, I got all these trees here, and what I've done is actually, I've just taken a picture of a old tree out in front of the house, and I'm just gonna use a little bit of that wood texture from that photograph and throw it in here and there on the tree to give it a little bit of life and make it look a little more realistic. So I wanted to put this Spanish moss in, and the brush that I found that worked best for the Spanish moss was a pastel brush. It's a dry pastel that actually comes with Photoshop. Again, I'm just using the basic stuff from Photoshop to do these things, but I felt like that actually gave the best look of Spanish moss. So that's what we're doing right here. We're just kind of adding the Spanish moss here and there, you know, trying to make it look as random as possible. You don't want it to just kind of look like, oh, there's Spanish moss everywhere. It's, if if you go and you look, if you're ever in the deep south and you get to see Spanish moss, you can tell that it's just got a randomness to it and it's not on everything, but it kind of make it kind of looks like it's on everything, but it actually isn't. So you just got to kind of go in there and look at it and see where it's at. Another thing is wherever Spanish moss has been living on a tree for a long period of time, it tends to kill that area of the tree. You won't have leaves growing from it. You won't have any type of new growth coming from that area. So that's something that you really got to pay attention to. Now, also what we're doing right here is we're starting to work on the sun. Where's the sun coming in at? I already knew where the sun was coming in at from the beginning because I made that decision. But what we want to do here is just make sure we keep bringing it in, making sure that we're using it. And then we're also darkening areas. There's areas where the sun isn't hitting. There's areas where... Uh, the sun is hitting and you want to make sure that you highlight those spots. Now this is something that I really got to focus on right here is fog or humidity or smoke or whatever you want to call it that's in a swamp. There is a ton of humidity in a swamp and there's always some sort of mist or or smoke or fog just rolling over the top of everything. And that's something that I really wanted to get in here. You know, I've, I've put it all across the bottom there. It's just kind of sitting real nice and heavy just above the, the water. And uh, it really gives a, a certain mood to it, you know. It, it really brings out the, the overall uh, interest in, in the piece that you're trying to sell. Now, right here, what I'm doing is I'm actually working on Cyber Frog's little technical things. Now, I had to go back and really look at the comic and see what the heck this was. And what I remember from reading is whenever he's connected to Internet or, or something like that, these uh, lights come on on Cyber Frog. And I thought, you know, he's in the swamp, but still, I'd like to have those lights on there because it, it's a key selling feature that makes it really look cool. So I went ahead and put those on them and there are these glowy things around the legs and the arms and stuff. And I thought it would make it look really, really cool. So we went ahead and did that. And also you got to throw some other little things in there to make it really pop. Like the smoke, you got the smokestack coming up out of the back of the, uh, the shack there, and that's really important because he's got to cook his chicken. How else is he going to cook his chicken if he ain't got a good fire going on? So he's got to have a fire going on back there. And we putting in a little bit more smoke here, just a little bit more to make him pop out amongst the, the background. So I'm, I'm just kind of trimming that out. It, it's just, this part shows you that it's not all fun. It's like you got to go in there and you got to work. You got to trim stuff out, you know, and and that's just what we're doing right there. Making that chicken pop, pop a little bit, <laughs> making that chicken pop and uh, also making cyber frog pop at the same time. So we've pretty much wrapped this piece up, just doing a few little details there, signing your name on it, uh, adjusting the light a little bit and a little bit of stuff here and there, a little bit of shiny stuff and just making it all pop and come together. Remember to go on over to Indiegogo and get on our mailing list. The link is in the description. Really hope y'all enjoyed this drawing today. Why don't you let me know what you think down below? Don't forget to subscribe down below, hit that notification bell, and share our videos. Also check out Come Get Some, a new show hosted by Black Star. She's the host of the universe.
Do, do, 